All right, guys, we're out here today. We're doing a quick little project for a buddy of mine, Launchpad McQuack. Really cool dude. Uh, he sent me his motorcycle tank to paint, and um, well, it's a little on the rough side, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> That's okay, we'll work with it. Um, I guess I should have been a little bit more clear about the prep work, but uh, we're just gonna roll with it. I think this is his, um, this is kind of his rat rod bike, so I don't think he really cares about it looking perfect. The tank's got some dents on it. It's a little bit scratched up. Uh, it's got a little bit of a scuff on it right now, but I think what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna hit it with some filler primer right here. I got some Rustoleum Rustoleum 2-in-1 sander and filler primer. And we're just going to give it a nice blast of this just to give us a good base to work on and then we can start laying down our colors. All right, we're going to give you a few little basic tips on how to prep a tank. Not like this one because <laughs> this one wasn't prepped properly. Um, you know, basically if you got any stickers, residual sticker material, you're going to want to remove that first. Get that out of the way. Um, also, if there's any dents or anything and you need to put any filler in those spots, what you want to do is sand that part down to the bare metal and then apply the filler because it will stick better. And you don't want to go too thick with the filler, so if the dent's too deep, you're going to want to pull that dent first. Uh, there is a dent on the tank, but I think we'll just... Like I said, I don't think he cares. He says it's whatever, just go ahead and paint it. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint it in this circumstance. But I just wanna let you know a few tips before you do it the correct way. Um, <clears throat> when you go ahead and start laying down your primer on certain objects like this where it's three dimensional, uh, you wanna go ahead and kinda get all like the weird edgy cracks and stuff first and then work from top to down. It's usually better to use aerosol when you're painting surfaces like this in open shade, uh, not in direct sunlight. Uh, but I don't have that luxury right now, so we're just gonna have to paint out here in the sun. It's a hot one today too. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, I think the first thing I'd probably wanna do is paint along these little ridges right here because that's gonna be difficult to paint when the tank is upright. So let's go ahead and start laying in some primer here. All right, let's go ahead and start laying in some lines. I just want to see what it looks like. Again, this is a filler primer, so it should fill in some of the cracks. It won't 100% do that, but it should fill in some of them. What's going to happen is we're going to see a lot of the imperfections. But again, this is his rat rod tank. It's not the perfect situation for me. And uh, this video is more about the artwork. So let's go ahead and lay that down.
All right, guys, now that we have sprayed the primer coat, it's definitely illuminated quite a few things that I didn't see beforehand. Uh, like I said, the tank was pretty rough. It looks like he's kept the original sticker from the motorcycle underneath there, which I didn't see before. So, you know, like I said, this is his rat rod bike and he's fine with it. So we'll go ahead and leave it as is. Again, not perfect. If it was me doing it, I wouldn't do it this way. Um, but you know, it's a rat rod, so I think it'll be fine. Those stickers don't come off and the primer will stick to it. So it should be okay for a couple years. Um, let's take another look at things. You know, there's some little nicks and dents right here that weren't visible before that the primer did show. So I'll hit it with some sandpaper and try to even it out as smoothly as I can. Um, but I just want to make it clear that this is not how I would normally do this. In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so before you start commenting below, um, we'll do another one of these videos where we do the whole prep process properly. All right guys, so we went ahead and got the primer on. I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and let it cure, set up really nicely. Then I'll go ahead and wet sand it. Uh, and we'll try to smooth it out as much as we can, at least at least to give it the best possible finish considering the circumstances. Um, but I gotta tell you, this Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 uh, filler primer really did fill in some of the cracks. Not the big ones, uh, but a lot of the small imperfections, it really did fill it in nicely. I wish we sold primer like this here, we don't. So you'll have to find it at your automotive store or Home Depot or ah, Ace Hardware. Go to your local Ace Hardware. They're all independently owned. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry and we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll start laying down the color and do something. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe kind of make it look like a graffiti fill, all colorful and stuff. And maybe I'll do a frisket of the KLR logo and we'll stamp that on top. I think it'll look pretty cool. So anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little wet sand. Again, you know, this is not my preferred process of prepping a thing, but you know, I just wanna make it as smooth as possible. And this will get rid of some of the high parts, smooth out some of the flat, some of the uh, scrapes and whatnot. Give it a good surface, a basis, as good as we can with the circumstances we're working with here, to at least just apply the paint. And this video was about the art. I'm using 600 grit right now. I think that should be sufficient for this project. Um, it seems to be evening things out nicely, uh, but you know, not, not too shabby, not too shabby. When you're doing wet sanding, make sure you mix a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna have to do a whole separate video on proper prep. I think that's what we're gonna have to do. Uh, but when you're wet sanding, make sure you put a little bit of dish soap in there. It'll help lubricate things and make sure you uh, keep it nice and wet. Uh, that way you can get a nice, smooth, even surface. Initially I wanted to paint this tank with this, um, you know, like a theme of a graffiti fill. So if you imagine the bike going by, it was going to look like the fill of a graffiti piece. And it, I had done that before on another bike, a sports bike. It was a uh, it was a Kawasaki Ninja that I painted for someone a few years back, and it really made the bike look dazzling. Uh, but this is a this is a dual sport bike, and as I started painting it, I realized that it, well, it just didn't look right. It didn't it didn't fit the bike, um, and I wasn't happy with what was going on with the fill in the first place. There were too many facet facets on the edges, you know. They just I wasn't able to get the can in the angle that I really thought would really make it work for this situation. Basically, we just went back to the drawing board and started over again. I think we've created something that fits the bike much better and something that um, Launchpad will really like. So let's check it out. All right, guys, we're at the next step. We're gonna go ahead and start putting our base coat down on the tank. It seemed to work really well with the fairing parts and um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes together once we have it all in there. And again, we're using Toad by Montana Black and right now I got a blue dot on. I can't find my blue gripping caps. They're around here somewhere, but I can struggle on with the blue dot. The blue dot's a very nice cap, even though it's splay, look at that. Even though it paints a cone-shaped spray, it's a very soft spray. So you can get some nice smooth smooth. <clears throat> so you can get some nice smooth even coverage. So let's go ahead and start laying this down.
Now do some vertical line. By going horizontal and vertical, you're going to get a much more even coverage. All right, now we got this base coat on. We're gonna go ahead and let it dry for a bit. And um, once it sets, then I can kind of take a look at it. If there's any little imperfections, as good as the tank is gonna be, of course. Um, we'll deal with it then, but I think it looks good. It's got nice, even coverage. So we'll go ahead and close out this part of the video and I'll see you at the artwork section, the fun part. All right, see you guys later. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm just over here enjoying myself on a nice, sunny, summer afternoon. The summer is finally here, it looks like. It's been raining like crazy. We're gonna go ahead and start lacing in the design for this tank. And remember, we're doing the Flying Tigers design uh, that was on the P-40 Warhawk aircraft uh, during World War II. And it's a very simple design, but you gotta kinda nail it right or it just doesn't look quite correct. And what it features is a, a shark's mouth, like, a, like an angry shark's mouth coming at you when they're dive bombing down on the ground. You want to have that look just, just right. Just like I said, simple design, but you got to nail it just right. Also the eyeball. The eyeball is shaped like a teardrop, so that shouldn't be too bad to do. But in order to kind of make this a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a china marker to just kind of sketch it in at first. And you can get these for cheap pretty much anywhere. Um, you could also use chalk if you want. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen guys like sketch out on cars when they're doing uh, flames and stuff like that. Sometimes they use chalk. Ugh, this thing will not unpeel. And this is kind of like a waxy material, so it'll come off the paint fairly easily. If I could ever get to the lead. <laughs> so, they don't make china markers like they used to. They used to use like a real nice woody base, and they used to unpeel really smoothly. But now they use like cardboard, which doesn't want to unpeel very well, of course, especially on camera. I gotta tell you though, if you're a writer on a budget, these make actually really good streakers if you're broke. Try them out on a dumpster, you'll be quite surprised how good they work, if you can get it to peel down well. Anyways, so let's get onto the tank here. Like I said, it's a pretty simple design, and what I wanna do is I just wanna get it sketched in first. We'll get it sketched, and then we'll mask it off. And then once we have it masked off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint a nice white base coat and that's going to be the base coat for the teeth and the base coat for the marker that's going to go above it after the fact. What that's going to do is just give me a nice solid base to work with and um, you know help keep it as smooth as possible. So now we got to think about how this bike is going to sit. There is a piece of plastic fairing that he sent me that goes right here but it's got vents in front of it so I don't think it would look really good to put the shark mount there. Normally on the P40 flown by the uh, Flying Tigers guys, the shark mouth was all the way at the front. But I think it would obscure the design. So we're really going to have to stick it to the tank, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we got to look at the tank as it sits. And this is how the bike would sit if you were to ride it, right? Because this is where the cap is. It wouldn't sit like this. So if I drew the shark mouth like that, it wouldn't look quite right. So let's go ahead and try to keep it up and even. And I'm, what I'm going to do is try to line it up as best as I can. This is all freehand, by the way. When I do it on the other side, it's gonna have to mirror it as best as possible. It won't be perfect, 
Um, but that's the artistic part of it, right? So let's go ahead and start sketching it in. Now the shark's mouth, I think I want to go... See, the eyeball would probably be about right there. I think that's where the eyeball is going to go. Yeah, so we want the shark mouth to come down like this. It goes down, and then it kind of goes up again. And then goes down again like that. And we'll do that for here as well, too. So once we get it all masked off, of course we're going to put the teeth in. It's gonna look really vicious when we're done, but let's uh, let's not do that now because we gotta paint that full of white paint. But let's just leave the design here like this, and then we'll move on to the other side. All right, so the person who's really gonna see if it doesn't match up is the writer, uh, Launchpad McQuack, the homie. So what I want to do is look top down as if I was riding the bike as I start to lay out the design. That way I know it's gonna be as close as possible. It won't be exact, it's just, it's artwork, you know what I'm saying? But at least if I'm looking at it from this angle, I can see that it's going to line up as best as possible from the point of view of the writer. It's all about point of view. So let me go ahead and just take a look here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some dots, some dots here at the parts where it looks like it'll end here. That. My years of framing houses and construction have got me pretty good at eyeballing this kind of stuff. If you're uncomfortable, uh, you could always use a ruler, measure the other side, and get an exact measurement. Um, but I'm confident my eyeballing will be quite close enough. This will go right here. You know, I could have used a frisket on this, but I really enjoy just doing this freehand. It's much more artistic, I think. The mouth is gonna get about an inch from the eyeball here, so let's follow the curve there. And then it goes back down. Like that. So at about right here is where it needs to be. I'm just using the pencil as a ruler, basically, just to make sure I'm making the mouth gape the same size here. You know, that matches up pretty good compared to the other side. I think we got it. Okay, let's go ahead and start taping it off. I'm gonna mask off the shape of this, and then when I'm done taping it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put paper around the rest of it to mask it off. And what I'm using right now is just the regular old 3M Scotch blue tape. Uh, you can get green tape, frog tape, cool tape, guy tape, I don't know, whatever tape you wanna use, it's fine. Uh, this is just what I happen to have on me. Let's go ahead and try and tape up around these lines here. Now what you can do on the curves is you can kind of do little sections like this. One thing I would recommend if you tape like this, uh, try to overlap all in one direction. You know what I'm saying? Like, like don't overlap this over like this. Uh, keep the overlaps going the same direction. And the reason why is when you finally go peel off the tape, you can just grab it from this end and peel it all off. I'll show you later when we get to that point. So let's go ahead and just start taping this in here. Uh, another thing you can do is you can like tear the paper like this and then kind of like do it in segments if you like. I mean, it's entirely up to you. Some, some tapes are more flexible than others. Um, I, just like, I just like doing it in little segments. So. It's kind of like Photoshop, you know? When you're using the uh, Polygono Lasso tool, it's pretty similar to that. So again, make sure you're overlapping in one direction. Just like the group, one direction. <laughs> you could probably remove the chalk marker if you want, but I think the paint will just encapsulate it. It's probably fine. Um, you know, this is just a fun little art project. 
You can kind of clean up some of the line by just kind of pushing the tape down evenly. I'm going to go back with a black marker anyways. Again, this is just the white base coat, so it doesn't really matter. It's just going to give me a nice clean surface to lay down the paint pens because we're going to ink this in with Molotov paint markers. Yes, we are using paint pens, guys. And they will take the clear coat, believe it or not. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, this is where the fairing goes over. So I don't think we really need to do a whole lot there, but I will I will probably just bleed the design out because I don't know I don't know how much the fairing you know there's gonna be a little bit of a, a reveal right here and I don't know how much the fairing is gonna reveal what's underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try and bleed it out. It's not laid on right, no worries, just go back and reapply it. You'll be all good in the hood, homie. You're all good in the hood. This will take a bit, so uh, get comfy. <laughs> so I was uh, I was lacing this in, and I realized that the teardrop of the eye actually goes the opposite direction. It's smaller towards the front, not towards the back. But I was going to change it back, but then I was like, you know what? This is my interpretation of it. So we'll just roll with it as it's. I think it looks really good, anyways. It will still look vicious and dope, and that is the whole point of this. So now we have the tank all taped up nice and even, evenly. Uh, this is the area that I'm going to be painting white. So what we're going to do is mask off everything else. So I have this lovely uh, weekly paper here that I'm going to use. And we're just going to cover the whole tank because when you use aerosol paints, um, they just get into everything. So make sure you got nice even coverage on everything. Check out that guy. That's my homie right there. <laughs> That looks like something I would do. <laughs> Rolling on a Vespa with a 12 pack or with a kit with a kit on the back. You know, guys, I used to have a mullet like that. Um, I just showed up home one day. I didn't even tell my wife I got a haircut. I just showed up at the house with a mullet. She came in and she's like, she's like, what'd you do to your hair? And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I got a mullet. She wasn't too keen on it, but she didn't say anything. She just let me rock it for a while. I got bored with it, moved on to something else. That's when I knew I was gonna marry her. And put up with my shit. <laughs> also try to get if you see like a little seam right here where there might be some metal under there, make sure you tape this as well too, uh, because the paint dust will get into there. So don't forget those parts. You don't have to like completely seal it, but just make sure that you got it at least laying down nice and evenly. Looks good. This is fine because this is folded from here over like that. So there's nothing open underneath there. So we can leave that. All right, dope. We're gonna go ahead and start laying in the white base coat for this uh, piece of artwork here. And I'm gonna be using Snow White. Now, Montana Black has a few different whites. Snow White, I find to be the most white white the best way I could describe it, like a wedding cake, if you will. Uh, the other white they have is more of like a natural white. Forgive me, I don't remember what the name of it is, but if you're looking for that cartoon Mickey Mouse white, this is the one you want to get, Snow White. Now these come stock with an orange dot, and it's a little bit too high output for this application, so I'm going to be using a gray dot, putting a gray dot on this bad boy. Oh, don't forget, these do have a little ring on the bottom there, take that off. All right, so I'm about 10 inches away from the surface, and I'm just going to do the first coats kind of light. And that'll give the paint something to stick on to. And we'll do these first coats kind of light. The remaining coats will go on a bit more heavy. 
Let's go ahead and put our next coax down. And now I'm probably about six inches away. Moving much quicker this time. All right, let's go ahead and do the last coat. I'm gonna go vertical this way so we can make sure we even out all the lines here. We don't have any styrations. Minimal as possible. Alright, let's go ahead and let that dry and uh, once it's set and nice and ready, we will go ahead and start putting in our artwork and then we'll be done. Alright guys, we went ahead and let it dry overnight and it's nice and thoroughly cured. So we're going to go ahead and start getting our pins ready because yeah, we're going to use markers. Molotov did a video a few years back where they actually used a marker to paint a motorcycle tank and I'm like, well I'm going to try it too. It does take the clear coat so it should go pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and get these markers prepped. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get this peeled off here. As you can see, um, let's see if we're going here. Remember I told you about layering the tape? Watch this. It's a lot easier when you layer the tape. Sometimes it doesn't come out all the way, but nevertheless, it comes out pretty even. Here we go. Now again, this white is just a base coat. That we're All right, so I went ahead and just penciled it in just to kind of get a basic idea. You don't have to do that. You could just go ahead and get drawing. Um, the China marker wouldn't have worked on this because, well, it's white marker on white background. You probably wouldn't see it too well. So I'm going to use a pencil. My only concern is the pencil does uh, can smear around if you're not too careful. But uh, we'll work around that. No problem. So what we have in the Flying Tigers is uh, you have the, the eye, the shark mouth, and a tongue behind there. So the back layer is going to be black in this area. So we'll overlap the black over this, which should cover that pretty nicely. Then we can lace in the red for the tongue, and then we can put white in here for the teeth as well, too. I think the teeth will be the last thing that we put. And then around it, it has like a thin red line for the gums of the shark. So first, let's start lacing in some of the black here. And the black should go right over the pencil really nicely. And indeed it does. And that nice white backdrop gives me a nice clean surface to work with. Now, there will be some china markers sticking out. Don't worry about that. You can just erase that after the fact problems with that. These Molotov markers, they just, they just lay down the paint so smoothly. So first let's get this outlined. tank there. The nice thing is these are water-based, so you can just run it back. We'll go back over it with the water, with the white marker anyways, but we'll just go over that. Sorry, I'm doing this at kind of a weird angle here. Whoa! 
don't make any cutbacks necessary. So all this we're going to have to fill in with the black here real quick, so let's just start filling it in. comes the fun part. Now these lay down a really nice smooth even line, but even if the line work wasn't totally even, um, we're going to put a layer of matte finish over it, and that'll flatten everything out really, really nicely. And uh, so when we're done with this, we'll be using the Molotov Clear Matte. it's a lacquer and it won't affect the water-based markers whatsoever. Just stay within the lines like in school, remember? Man, these markers are so smooth. They sure make me look better than I am. <laughs> But I will tell you, putting that white base coat down first makes a huge difference. It really does. Now I'm going to go ahead and bleed it off here. There's going to be a fairing right there, but I don't want a little white space there, so let's just bleed it all off. That'll get covered. Looks like we got all the black on this side done. Oh wait, hold on a second. I just forgot about the eye. Now, full disclosure, I don't have this eye exactly correct for the flying tigers. It's actually narrower on the front and fatter in the back for flying tigers. But there are other war, other aircraft that use this kind of scheme that is, uh, you know, inspired out the flying tigers. And uh, there's a British airplane which they did this. I think it was a Spitfire, if I remember right. That had this uh, this uh, regalia, if you will. So even though this is a Flying Tigers homage, it's still period correct. <laughs> really brave guys man they were really brave dudes all right so let's go ahead and get that filled in i think i'm going to outline around it with the black still debating whether i want to do that Ooh, that's looking really good already feeling it all right let's go ahead and start lacing in the tongue portion uh, before i get started i just want to comment on this look how smooth the black is on there this is done with a marker this was not stenciled and sprayed on. That is really, really smooth. I've never seen a marker that lays down like that. Now granted, we put that white base coat down, which makes a big difference. Uh, but try that with a Sharpie or a Deco. It just won't look so even and smooth. And once we lay that that white, that uh, matte finish over that, it's gonna look even smoother. This is a top marker. I gotta tell you. I mean, I've used them in black books and a whole lot of different applications, but I've never used it like this. And really inspired me. I want to do more projects like this in the future, you know, just to expand my horizons, get out of my comfort zone, if you will. Uh, man, I'm just, just remarking on that. It's just amazing. So anyways, let's go ahead and start lacing in the tongue. Now, we're going to start using this red here. And uh, this is the Signal Red by Molotov. Now, don't worry if you cut into the teeth or anything, because we're going to come back over that and cut it back anyways. First, let's just get everything outlined here.
And don't forget, we're going to put a big red outline over all this too. Alright, so just follow the lines just like a coloring book. Get everything all nice and laced in there. I can't wait to lace the white on top of that. It's gonna look really nice. I love this song. This is the original on vinyl. <coughs> So I'm left-handed, so I'm trying to do my best not to run my fingers over the stuff that I've already painted. That's the struggle of the left-handed writer. Um, even though this isn't letters, but nevertheless, we seem to be more prone to it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lace in the tongue here. Now, this is not uncommon for reds to not hide well what's underneath. And uh, so we might have to go back over a couple spots of the pencil uh, because the red, you know, while it's covering, you know, you might see some of the, the pencil shining through. So we'll let that dry and then we'll hit it with another layer and that should button it up pretty nicely. That's common for reds, but any brand. I might have an eraser actually too. Let's see if I have an eraser for the white parts. Crazy history, man. Real crazy history. But yeah, so these guys went over there to fight. A lot of them died. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start lacing in the white now. I probably could just leave it, but I want to just sharpen up the lines a little bit. And uh, I don't want, you know, again, we're going to matte finish it, but I don't want to risk any, like, sheen differences, too, between the white underlayer and the Molotov marker. I want to make sure it's all in the same family here. So we're just going to go ahead and lace this in. And I'm just cutting back over the red. It might pick up some of the red ink, so I might have to do a couple layers. I thought I'd want to mention this. Notice how I'm holding my hand like this. Like if I'm just going like this, you know, I get a decent amount of control, but over time your hand gets a little tired. So it's totally cool to just grab your other hand like this and use it as a brace. And uh, you might find that you're going to have a little bit more control that way. You'd be amazed how many people don't think of that. So I know some people like, obviously you're holding. <laughs> Some people don't know. You know, I try to approach these videos from the point of view of somebody who just doesn't know anything, you know, because we all start from somewhere. There's always a noob, you know what I mean? There's always going to be a noob out there. And uh, I want to be supportive to the noobs. All right, let's go ahead and let that dry. Cool. All right, let's put a little dot on the eye right there. I don't remember if the Flying Tigers had this, but I think, I think it'll make for the, uh, just give it a little bit of contrast. So we're going to go ahead and uh, finish up here. We just got to do a quick outline around the eye and outline around the mouth. Just a nice, sharp, clean black outline to just kind of tie it all together. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on that. Watch my palm there. There we go, beautiful. Wow, look at that, that really ties it together. Let me start that song over. I really like that song. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start outlining this one.
Watch your palm, GR. Watch your palm. <laughs> I probably wouldn't feel this way if it wasn't for uh, 15 years of skateboarding and 20 years of graffiti falling off rooftops and stuff. It really takes a toll on your body. <laughs> So I'm going to add a double line to this just to give it a little bit more depth. We're all done. I think it looks really good. It came out nice and sharp and clean. And the Molotov marker really lays down a smooth line. It's very interesting to see it on this surface. Because most people use them for black notes. But on here, I mean, it, I mean, it looks like I could have stenciled it and sprayed it. I mean, it's, it's how clean it went down. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and finish it off on the other side, off camera. And uh, once we're done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and lay a nice matte finish clear coat over it so it looks nice and sharp. And uh, we'll just send it out. Alright guys, let's go ahead and put that final coat on this bad boy. I have some Molotov clear matte finish. And this is item number 253, or I'm sorry, sort number 253 in the Molotov line. This is a clear lacquer that you can apply right over the Molotov markers. It's your water-based. This is the lacquer. It goes right over them. You won't have any bleeding or anything. We've used it numerous times with this lacquer and had great effect. So first I'm just gonna do like a, a rough coat over the artwork itself. So I'm just gonna dust it on like that. So that'll be uh, just a little something to protect the artwork right there. We're gonna let that flash really quickly. All right, dope. Let's go ahead and start lacing in the clear coat. Now I'm using the red calligraphy cap. I find it covers a nice, even area. Very smooth output. Try to move quickly. If you go too slow, you will get sagging. So move along with the spray. And that's it. All right, guys, that's it. We just painted a tank, did a little bit of artwork for Launchpad. I hope he enjoys it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a fun little tutorial. I hope we could do more of these in the future. So if there's anything you want to see, just comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll be sure to add it to my list of future videos. Anyways, this is our Primo video, so remember, if you ever need graph supplies, you need art supplies, you need any of that good stuff to do whatever it is you need to do to get creative, Give us a call. It's 206-365-4083, 206-365-4083. This is GR. Call and talk to me. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you later.